a really strong statement uh, about small business. And I didn't know what I was going to uh, uh, what I was going to get into when I saw the headline. Uh, it's from the Washington Post today, and uh, it is a story written by Mohana Ravindranath uh, in the Washington Post. Uh, I read it at WashingtonPost.com. But the, the headline on the story says, Sandy cost some small businesses, not some, a lot of small businesses, but creates opportunities uh, for others. And, you know, sometimes after we are going through some kind of tragedy, some kind of uh, horrible situation, there are people out there who will try to take advantage of the situation. And for sure that's going to happen uh, in, in the uh, devastation of, of uh, Sandy. But here is a story uh, published today uh, about uh, some good things that happened with small businesses. And, and by the way, I, I've gotten some emails already today uh, that warning folks of, of scams that will happen. People will say, we'll uh, help you uh, make improvements to your home if you've been devastated by the storms and the flooding and the hurricane and whatever. And in fact, they uh, take your money and run and you never see them. Uh, that is going to happen, but hopefully uh, it will be kept. No, it will be. It will be kept at, uh, at a minimum. But here's a good story about small business. And I want you to think uh, about the creativity of these small business owners, about the uh, innovative thinking. Uh, the story, uh, Mohana uh, starts out by saying, few small business owners went untouched by Monday's uh, superstorm. For some, it cost valuable business, uh, but for others, it brought a surge of new customers. And here's how some Washington area small business owners fared during Sandy. And uh, we know that uh, Washington, uh, not so much Washington itself, uh, but for sure outlying areas uh, in, uh, in Maryland and uh, Pennsylvania and Jersey uh, got hit uh, tremendously harder than uh, actually the city of Washington. But here's what some really innovative, creative thinking uh, small business owners uh, did. Uh, there's a company called Lawn Plus LLC in Stafford, Virginia. At, as the superstorm approached, several small business owners uh, and individuals took to Craigslist to offer a variety of services such as transportation and emergency roof repair. One even offered to run errands during the storm for a $20 service fee for others, uh, for orders under $100, mostly for delivering batteries, water, or groceries. Stafford, Virginia-based Lawn Plus LLC took out an ad uh, in Craigslist to pick up leaves and branches and clear fallen trees, hoping to boost business during a period when their traditional lawn work, yard work, uh, begins to slow in the fall, excuse me, in the fall. Founder Brandon Cummins said the storm provided an opportunity to keep his crews busy, depending upon the landscape and lawn conditions. Cleanups uh, can actually range from $100 to a few hundred dollars. Now, uh, he certainly wasn't taking advantage of, of, of the storm. He was taking advantage of the opportunity uh, that uh, was created and very smartly uh, ran an ad in Craigslist uh, to get new business. And he is generating revenue at a time when revenue in his business, the way he traditionally runs it, slows down. That is very uh, innovative thinking. Uh, and, and we applaud, uh, what was his name, Bradford on that? 
the the the, the challenge, uh, Brandon. Brandon, the challenge that Brandon has uh, that a lot of internet uh, service providers uh, were very challenged to deliver uh, an internet signal uh, to uh, your computer if you lived in the eastern part of the country, eastern one third of the country, and in fact. Uh, one of the also tragedies was that uh, folks who had wireless, had, had mobile phones, smartphones, whatever, were also very challenged. It was very difficult to get a signal uh, in those areas because of, of damage done to uh, cell towers, what, whatever. Uh, but uh, we, we applaud Brandon uh, for, his, uh, for his efforts. Another company called Bulgaji Cart, Lawnfont Plaza and Farragut, Farragut Square, uh, somewhere in the Washington area. I'm not familiar with that uh, area. The Bulgaji Cart, a Korean food truck, often located at the Lawnfont Plaza or Farragut Square during the work week lunch rush, did not venture out Monday and Tuesday because the federal workers who make up a, a, a very significant chunk of their business uh, were ordered to stay home, not even come to work on Monday and Tuesday. In two days, the cart typically rings up $2,000 in food sales. Uh, that means $1,000 a day, according to Catherine Song, whose mother owns the truck. On a good day, the truck can see more than 100 customers during lunch. Okay. Uh, what are they going to do? Do they shut their business down or uh, take a different approach to the traditional way they do business? Depending upon Wednesday's forecast, the Vienna, Virginia family will decide tonight whether to return to the streets. It's risky still. Uh, Song is particularly concerned about the loss in business because the family has no secondary income. Well, we, we know they're going to be ready to go today. Uh, depending upon uh, how much street activity there is, uh, they'll be able to move forward. Actually, I was starting, thought I was uh, referring to another situation, but here's one at uh, the Sadamo Coffee and Tea Shop, 417 8th Street in the northeast sector of Washington. Uh, Kenfi Belay, owner of 8th Street Northeast Sadamo, S-I-D-A-M-O coffee and tea shop, cut short the shop's hours on Monday and Tuesday because he said the majority of his five employees couldn't get to work uh, without the metro system. During the week, the shop operates from 7 in the morning until 6 at night. But on Monday and Tuesday, it was open from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., shortened hours by uh, 3, 4, shortened hours by 4 hours. Uh, actually, no, seven, oh, by three hours, uh, shortened by three hours. Uh, Belke said he covered the cost of the cabs for those employees who could safely make it to work on Monday and Tuesday. And on Tuesday, on Monday, and on Tuesday, he drove to pick them up personally from their homes in Montgomery County. Now, there's a small business owner who will go to the nth degree uh, to keep business going. Okay, what was the result of that? Despite the shortened hours and depleted staff, Belly Belay said he knew he saw an increased number of people walking into get coffee and use the internet in his establishment uh, in the late morning relative to normal morning foot traffic. There's no work, so it's like a Sunday schedule, he said. On a busy day, he sees about 100 people in total. But by noon on Monday, he had already seen about half of that. Tuesday was equally busy. Because the Fulton shop had been closed for two days, Belle is concerned about the wasted ingredients in the kitchen, such as milk and vegetables. When he closed the shop on Sunday night, he intended to reopen on Monday morning, and therefore didn't have time to dispose of the perishable foods. Okay, that's part of uh, the disaster that, that, that one is struck with. But here's a gentleman uh, who 
would walk the extra mile to keep his business operating and to get his employees in knowing that uh, they couldn't take the bus as many of them take. Uh, he sent out a taxi to get them. Uh, and then when he could, he personally drove uh, to pick them up. You know what? That, that's what small business is all about. Uh, we need to do those things. Uh, and it would, have been, it would have been so easy for him to say, oh, well, uh, nobody's out on the streets. So we're not going to do any business. It's a challenge. Uh, he stepped forward, stepped up to the plate, if you will. And the interesting thing, and we'll, 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 I'll try to read a follow-up story to this. I probably won't be one. But uh, he might even say that, not might, I know. I know for a fact uh, he, will say, he will see some new customers in his store. He has seen some new customers in his store that he has never seen before. And those folks will tell some of their friends who maybe have never been in his uh, establishment before. So you see what happens when... Uh, when we were small business owners 24 by 7. I have set up in, in, in my business model, uh, I am 99% dependent upon uh, being able to be online. And fortunately, uh, I am actually able to be online probably close to 99% of the time. And uh, I am indeed blessed that what I do, I don't have to leave my home. Uh, just stay here and do what I have to do. That's the beauty of, a, of an online business. And so what happens when uh, technology goes down, we don't have an internet connection, or servers uh, at some of the places that we're trying to connect to uh, are not uh, working properly. There's other things that we can do in our business. Uh, we can clean up a, a, an office, a, a studio that needs cleaning up. I had some guy um, over the weekend was viewing uh, what, what I was doing. I think it was on Sunday uh, or maybe it was Saturday. I don't know. Maybe last Saturday. And he sent me he sent me, uh, 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 he got into the chat room, the uh, Stickham chat room, which, quite honestly, I don't pay very much attention to. Uh, there are better ways to get my attention. But I happened to look, uh, and he was uh, telling me that I need feng shui in my, my office. You think I need feng shui? I, uh, I like... I like the way the office is. It's it's comfortable to me. Uh, it uh, it reminds me of things. But uh, I do clean it up. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of excess that I actually don't need. I threw a bunch of stuff out yesterday, looking for something I couldn't find, and I knew that was somewhere. Well, I thought it was somewhere in this office. It ended up not being in the office. It ended up being in the logical place it should have been. But uh, we have to make the most of, of, of downtime or challenges. Being a small business owner, I don't like I don't like to talk about risk. I like to talk about challenges. That's the the, the fun of business is the challenges that are presented, and the fun is creating a goal and objective and doing what you have to do to reach it, to realize it, to make that goal or objective. That's the real fun and the challenge in business. That, there's no risk there. Okay, what else happened? Uh, one last, um, one last uh, story about a small business in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital at 3628 Georgia Avenue in the northwest sector of the, of the city. Petworth neighborhood is where it's called. They have a restaurant called D.C. Reynolds. They saw record business on Monday and Tuesday, according to the owner, Justin Gifford. 
As winds picked up on Monday, the restaurant offered happy hour drink specials between 11 a.m. and 9 p.m. instead of their traditional happy hours. And the owners decided to offer the deal again on Tuesday as many D.C. residents were asked to stay home from work again. Lunchtime traffic on Monday and Tuesday was three times the usual weekday amount, and Monday's dinner traffic rivaled that of the restaurant's usually very busy Friday nights. Most of the patrons enjoyed a drink or two during the happy hour, just a drink or two, uh, with their lunch and dinner, said co-owner Jeremy Giffords, Justin's brother. Customers likely were experiencing cabin fever and just wanted to get out. Okay, just I, I, it was a nice story about uh, taking care of business. And uh, we applaud uh, those very innovative Washington, D.C. small business owners. So think about that. Think about that when you're thinking about starting your business. That, okay, here's what you want to do. And we don't live in a perfect world. It's not always going to happen as we want it to. It happens as it is. So if it does happen not as you would like it to, what are you going to do? to compensate for that. It's, uh, it's a great thing uh, to think about. I'm going to end uh, this segment and we're going to go 